I just said hello to you. In sign language, welcome to another episode of Oops, Wrongo with your host, Ramsey's Ralbacast. Or as anybody who's ever picked up the phone when I've ordered takeout has said it, could you repeat that, please? You know, after the last podcast, I've been doing a lot of thinking and, you know, I've realized I would really love it. I'd love it if from now on we could just decide as a nation to from now on refer to any and all public masturbation as a New York City tug of war. Can we do this, please? Please, I beg you. I just want to hear it one day. I just want to see two strangers run up to each other and say, Yo, dude, dude, guess who I saw yesterday in the middle of a Toys R Us? How am I supposed to know that? Who would you see? David. David. Dave from high school. David. Guess what he was doing? New York City tug of of war, dude. No way. In the middle of a Toys R Us. A Toys R Us? A friggin' Toys R Us, dude. Yo, not for nothing, but I saw this coming, okay? Prom night, dude shows up with a girl made out of Legos. That ain't normal. God, I hope it becomes slang. I suppose time will tell. Anyway, I want to dive right into it today. I want to get right into the thick of things and talk about what I think is a huge problem. Not in the world, not even in this country, but in my life. It's becoming a problem. It's becoming an an issue. Increasingly so. Gentlemen, my fellow men, my brothers, we have to make an effort to keep in touch. This This is a message. This is a call to arms to all my dude friends out there. Gentlemen, we need to keep in touch, okay? We need to fight against our inner dude urge to just not pick up the phone. And I get it. I get it. For some reason... The idea of talking on the phone to me is worse than passing a kidney stone. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because you like to talk a lot of shit when you've never passed a goddamn kidney stone in your goddamn life. Wow. Uh, no, you know what? That's fair. That's fair. But, um, look, we're talking about keeping in touch. We're talking about how the dude need to not be on the phone actually hurts us long run. We got to keep that in check, guys. I mean, especially, especially in the situation that I'm in, which is I found myself in the situation where luckily a lot of my dude friends have ended up with girls who are enjoyable people. They've ended up with girls who are smart and funny and, and just, just fun to be around. And so that has made it a situation where I'm friends with both my dude friends and their significant others. And when you have that specific situation, we enter what I like to call the ambassador complex. I wish I had the money to license the Twilight Zone theme song, but I don't. So, the ambassador complex. Now, this is something that can only occur when you are friends with both parties in a romantic relationship, okay? There's a boyfriend, there's a girlfriend, and you are friends with both of them. Let's begin. As previously stated, the ambassador complex only happens when you are friends with both parties in a relationship. So, this happens either when a friend of yours meets somebody wonderful, and because they're wonderful, you end up being friends, or it happens when a friend of yours decides to date somebody who you were already on friendly terms with, so boom, automatically friends. And there you go. Now. Now. The moment that happens, the moment your dude friend turns and sees that his girlfriend is already friends with his friend, what happens is... In his mind, subconsciously, he thinks, yes, Uh, my phone call days are over. Bye-bye, buttons. So long, touchscreen. Daddy's going off the grid. And just like that, without noticing, at that very moment, your friend has now gotten all phone call duties and transferred them over to his lady. The moment your friend sees that you are friends with his girlfriend, you are never going to hear that guy's voice over the phone again. That's it's just, that's it. That's it. You're, I mean, I'm exaggerating. You're going to hear it, but you're not going to have any more phone calls. You know, you know, the phone calls. Hey, how are you doing, man? Well, how's life? Catch me up. What, what's, what's going on? You'll still hear all these questions, but from here on out, you'll notice it's coming at a few higher octaves. It's going to be a lady voice and only a lady voice from here on out. Because now, she's no longer Jessica, your friend, slash his girlfriend, no. Now, she's the ambassador to the relationship nation. And you're going to start noticing, not on the first call, not on the second, but eventually. You're going to notice that even though you are friends with the both of them equally, by the very virtue of not hearing your dude friend over the phone ever, 
you just start viewing the situation differently. It just it doesn't matter how you want to view it. You just start getting this hilarious, this hilarious feeling about the situation that it, it no longer sounds like a normal phone call when she calls you up to ask how you're doing. It is a normal phone call because she's saying normal things. She's asking, hey, how are you? What's going on? So what are you up to? But you no longer hear that anymore. After a while, what you start hearing is, Hello, American colonies. The United Kingdom sends its warmest regards. And I understand. I get it. You guys are together. You're in a relationship. You guys are united. You are a united front. He is you. You are he. And you are all together. Okay, but this walrus is having an increasingly hard time not finding this situation hilarious. <laughs> Because that's it feels like I'm talking to the envoy of a foreign nation. That, that's just what it sounds like when just the girlfriends in the relationships handle most of, and I, and I mean like, I mean like 99.9% of the phone call duties. That's just the feeling that that gives. It's the feeling that it gives. It feels like I'm talking to the envoy or to the lawyer of a corporation. That's what happens when half of the party, the boyfriends, become non-existent as far as the phone calls go. It's just this like this odd, weird, weird sense that you, you know you're talking to one person, but they represent the other. They represent the whole. That's right. That's what happens. That's what happens when the girlfriends do all the calling and the boyfriends never do. The girlfriends end up representing the union in odd ways and in funny ways. In the way that they say things. I don't know if most of them even realize the way they're expressing themselves, but sometimes I feel like I'm in Star Trek, like I'm talking to the Borg, because they'll say things like, We miss you. We haven't seen you in so long. You're just hearing we, 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 we? Dear God, it's finally happened. They've melded into one being. The hive mind. Must get pretty weird when they think, We need to take a shit. Bloop, bloop. We should not have gotten all those burritos and dipped them in Indian food. In hindsight, we made a mistake. And now we need to call the plumber. Yo, yo, what's this? Come on. I said I could help you because I'm a plumber, but you guys need a goddamn archaeologist in this. That's at least four layers of solid shit. I ain't looking for fossil fuels, guys, okay? I ain't fracking today. We are sorry. Wasting my goddamn time. I swear to God, Mom was right. Be a dentist, she said. Go to school, she said. And what did I do? What did I do? Amateur porn, like a f***ing idiot. We need you to leave. All I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, my friends of both genders, is that it's important for there to be a balance in the phone calls. Because if not, it just gets weird. Funny, yes, but weird. <laughs> but weird, okay? And to my lady friends who have been making the calls, it is appreciated, okay? Don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying you are being weird. It's not you. It's not you. It's the situation, okay? It, it's the situation that makes it, just makes it odd after a while. But again, funny. And, and I should clarify because I have said that I hate making phone calls and I hate receiving them. And that's true. That's true. I hate both of those moments, but I actually enjoy the phone calls once I'm in them. When it's happening and I'm already in there, it's like jumping into a pool that's super cold. At first you're like, no, 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 oh, damn it. And then you're in there and you're like, oh, oh, ooh, this is nice. This is nice. By the way, this is not something that happens in a phone call with Comcast customer service, but uh, with my friends, it is enjoyable. I just want you guys to know that, okay? I don't want anybody to think like, oh, I've been calling him and he's been having a terrible time. I say, I, I haven't. I haven't. Once I'm in the phone call, it's great. I'm just saying the lead up. The lead up. And that is why, talking to you now, gentlemen, that is why I understand, okay? But like I said, we need to make the effort. We need to make the effort to pick up these phones and make the calls and pick up the calls, okay? And you know what? As much as I hate it, I will do it for the friendship, okay? I'll Michael Bolton the shit out of this. I will go the distance. Jace, I will do it for you, my friends. Uh, I should. I should make more phone calls, too. Can't be talking all this, all this trash. Can't be putting it on you guys alone. I gotta make a few more digit dialing moves here. We gotta do this, gentlemen. My brothers. We can't let priests have a monopoly on keeping in touch. Oh! Spotlight was a low-key horror movie, man. Oh, Jesus. Anywho, yeah, that's the verdict. Gotta keep the friendships healthy. Speaking of healthy, I gotta keep myself healthy. And you know what I've been doing, guys? I hope you don't. That would mean you've been watching me. I've been changing up my diet. I've been dropping a lot of the, a lot of the sugar. You know, a sugarless life is no life at all.
no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I just, a uh, lot less pancakes up in here, along with smiles and, uh, what's that, uh, joy? Yeah, that's gone. Nah, I'm exaggerating. It's not, it's not a big deal. I just eat clean during the week, and then during the weekends, I go John Ham and have all the cakes. I'm not really big on cakes. I have a lot of chocolate, but it's true what they say. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Nothing has tasted as delicious as the things I like after I force myself not to eat them for a week. It's just that when I get them, I'm like, oh, I found you at long last. I feel like, I feel like Dracula when I get my hands on dessert on the weekends. Because throughout the week, I've been Gary Oldman hovering over my tiramisu like it's Winona Ryder. All I want is to bite you. But no, I cannot. I love you too much. I would start with one bite. And before you know it, I'd be eating compulsively. Did you know it took me like 300 years to lose 50 pounds? It's not easy for me. Do you have any idea how many calories are burned by turning into smoke? None. Not even one. And I swear to Satan, if I hear one more of my familiars tell me you need to go on Jenny Craig, Count Dracula, I will skin him alive and drain him of his blood. And then, then, when I am done, I will, will probably eat some more tiramisu. Like I said, it's not easy for me. And making phone calls ain't easy for me. But I'm gonna do it anyway for my friends. Speaking of which, thank you guys for joining me on another episode of Oops! Run! Doing this to piss off the neighbors. Ho! Oh, hasta la bye-bye, everybody.